This is AnimeCons TV. On this episode, Patrick talks about the charity effort to help Greg Air smile. She even Elizabeth help you buy a wig better than this. We sit down with voice actor J. Michael Tatum. We get email and double voicemails. Oh, and you can win an Android phone. The big story in convention news this month is the charity effort conducted by Anime Detour to help out Greg Ayers. When Greg was 16, he was the victim of a violent attack during which he lost his front four teeth. A bridge was installed and he was told it was a permanent solution. But this summer while doing a convention in Minneapolis, he felt the bridge starting to be dislodged during a panel. He finished the panel, then did an autograph session, uh, then went back to his room and discovered that the bridge was totally dislodged. Uh, he DJed for four hours wearing a bandana around his head and uh, while he was doing that his friends from Anime Detour uh, began looking for a solution and uh, they found an emergency dental facility. Uh, the analysis, analysis was that it would cost something in the $15,000 range and if it wasn't done quickly he wouldn't be able to work because naturally a voice actor you need your teeth. So Anime Detour started making arrangements to get the work going and uh, the convention posted a donation page on their website and within 24 hours they managed to raise over $5,000. Anime Detour's parent organization also donated $5,000 so uh, Greg's able to get the work done thanks to the fans. Uh, now Greg said and I quote, I was so amazed and touched at the number of people, some of whom I had never met, willing to help them and help me. And so, uh, yeah, we all think it's a, a great story that all the fans were able to help Greg out in his time of need. An important part of any costume is a wig. And most of the time, you're probably going to have to buy a wig online unless you're lucky enough to have a local store. And there are a lot of different options of buying wigs online, and Chief and I are going to give you some advice. Now, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> now, the first thing you, um, you might do is do a Google search for wigs. But most of the time, what comes up are what we would probably consider fashion wig sellers. Yeah, that's people that actually wear wigs on a daily basis, you know, for whatever reason. I mean, it's not going to be the kind of stuff that's made for a costume. And, and if you look up costume wigs, most likely you're going to get like Halloween costume sites mm -hmm. or people that are just buying like a cheap wig to wear once to a costume party. And those usually aren't very good quality, so that's not something you really want to invest in. Right, but there are some cosplay websites that, um, companies that are specifically geared towards uh, cosplayers, and uh, two of those are Art of Wigs and Epic Cosplay. You can find those online really easily. And um, these are both from Arta Wigs, and they're a really great uh, resource. And there's also a long-standing company called Amphigori. They sell mm -hmm. a lot of fashion wigs and a lot of cosplay-centric wigs. Um, one downside of them is it sometimes takes a while for them to ship. So if you want to check out uh, Amphigori, it, it makes sure you have a lot of time to get the wig to you. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you can do searches on cosplay websites or communities where people discuss tips and tricks to see what other people are using for wig vendors. And a lot of people will suggest companies they like and they'll also warn you about companies that aren't very good that sell bad products or take a century to send the wig to you or just have bad customer service. Or they're overpriced or, mm -hmm. or whatever. And there's even some websites out there like I know American Cosplay Paradise does it where in your costume profile you can put the style and type and color of a wig you use so some people you can just look it up you don't even have to ask and see what worked for some people. Now if you're ordering from a website which I guess we kind of called fashion websites, fashion wig websites, two really great ones are wigs-us.com and International Wig. Now although International Wig does take a long time to ship they have a huge 
selection of wigs and they also have sales a lot of the time so they're a good place to check out and when you go to these websites there are tons and tons of brands reaching from way really really cheap to really really expensive human hair synthetic but you want to look for one of three brands it's called new uh, new look mm -hmm. forever young and sepia those are really great prices and good quality wigs they do do some colors as well like you know, party, what they call party colors in addition to natural Yeah, colors. which is like you have a lot of the anime characters have crazy colors. I know Karen's Wig International also does the new, the new look line and they have a lot of different color choices you can do even though they might only show the natural colors on the site. You can pick from all sorts of colors. The prices you want to look for are $25 to $35 for a short wig, $30 to $40 for a medi medium length wig, uh, $40 plus for a long wig and when you get into things that are character specific say for stocking for panty and stocking you're gonna pay a lot more money yeah because they're they know they're trying to reach a certain audience so they they take advantage of it anything cheaper than probably the $25 wig you're probably gonna get what you pay for yep. at that point now when you're buying your wig you want it to be as close to the style and color as the character that you're portraying uh, which can be challenging at times but uh, there Wigs have definitely come a long way, especially in the cosplay community oh, with yeah. all sorts of different colors. And so no more having to Sharpie dye everything. And ponytail wigs have been a godsend. Yes. The clip-on ponytails. God. Best idea Westing, ever. Wefting days are over. <laughs> if you go to cosplay websites where people upload their costumes and things like that, um, see if you can find the character with someone else already making the costume and see what they use for a wig. Mm -hmm. See if you like it or not. And a lot of times people will put what kind of wig and color it is in their costume description. I try and do it with every costume so people mm -hmm. will know. And if they ha if they didn't, just send them a message and ask, you know, what kind of wig did you use? It looks really awesome. And that's a really great way to find a, a wig that works good for your costume. It is. And I mean, they might have gotten it off of eBay and not know. But a lot of times if they have a seller they use all the time, they'll have some recommendations. Mm -hmm. And if you um, go to, uh, we mentioned earlier, Ace. Uh, ACP, AC Paradise, you can search by wig, by character, yes. and things like that, and see what all sorts of people have used. You can see what such and such wig from the seller looks like mm -hmm. outside, not just on a wig stand in some studio under really ugly lighting. I mean, that said, you do want to be careful um, going after a character wig if it's their if the character's hair is simple and something like like this which is kind of straight purple um, or something like you know some of the Final Fantasy characters like Tifa for instance that's just bangs with a long dark wig so if you're looking for that online you might just want to search you know brown straight long bangs things like that then something like cosplay Tifa where if someone has is selling it as a character they might charge more mm -hmm. when it's not necessary and um, a lot of websites that sell wigs will have their own customer galleries. Mm -hmm. uh, Art of Wigs is a great example of this. If you search a, a specific wig or s specific color, they'll have a gallery underneath with all the customers who have sent in pictures of themselves wearing the wigs and you can see what they've done with them, what kind of styling they've done to them, and see you know, exactly what the wig looks like. And it's a really great resource that some wig sellers have. Also something to keep in mind, obviously when you're looking online they can't put every color for every style. Uh, we mentioned this a little bit before, but when they show the wigs, a lot of times they will have a color palette that has numbers mm -hmm. and the numbers will cor correspond to this this color chart and you can see, um, depending on the numbers, what colors the wigs available in and then you can go compare it and see if that works for your costume. Mm -hmm. Now that with the fashion wigs a lot of times is the colors will be the same from mm -hmm. seller to sun seller like one is black and black is or pretty much the same. Or henna red or something yeah, like that. Yeah and like 24 is a certain type of blonde and 144 is kind of this color so if you need to go to a different seller it might match but you really want to try and keep with the same seller mm -hmm. but when you get to things like pink and purple it, it really varies from seller to seller. But that you might see when you're looking at people's wigs they'll say like this wig 24 and that's corresponding to a color that's what they're talking about. So those um, that's some suggestions on how you can find something that will work perfectly for the character you want to portray. So I'm here with J. Michael Tatum, Hello. voice actor, ADR director, script writer. Yes. Does a lot of, lot of awesome stuff. You've probably heard him as Kyoya from Orin High School Host Club and Sebastian from the show you may have heard of called Black Butler. Yeah, little show. Little, little show. show. <laughs> No one knows what it is. <laughs> what was the first anime convention you ever attended as a guest? 
I think the, the, that would have to be uh, Anime Fest in Dallas, my hometown. Uh, 2005 or 2006? I can't remember now which year, but it was, it was quite a while back. And that was the first, first con I ever did as a guest. Not, not my first con, uh, of course, but, uh, but definitely the first one as a guest. And right. how was that experience as a guest? It was it was strange. I had been to a lot of cons when I was younger and was very much a part of that culture and being on the other side of it where now, uh, you know, I'm the one signing autographs and doing this. It was really weird. It was it was hard getting used to because I didn't like I didn't like the clear separation between between fans and and myself. I, I like being in the thick of it, you know, that's what I'm used to. So it took it took some doing. I, I they were great. I mean the the con itself was wonderful and they've always treated us like family and they're great to the fans as well, but I don't think I like the attention. I was like, I want to go get this person's autograph. I want to go see the cosplayers. It felt like I don't know. It was it was weird. It was very weird, very strange experience. But everyone was very really awesome about it. So, what type of conventions did you attend before? Um, uh, anime conventions, some sci-fi conventions here and there, um, some Trek conventions, of course, and uh, things like that. There there were never really just a whole lot to choose from uh, in my neck of the woods where I grew up. So the ones I did go to were usually very small. Um, very kind of, and had that wonderful sort of family atmosphere, and you made friends for life there because you ended up meeting people that shared the same interest who you never would have known existed uh, if you hadn't been to that con. And that's, I love, what I love about cons now still is getting to be part of that process because that to me is the most important thing a convention does is create an atmosphere where people of like minds can get together and just be themselves. Um, and and meet friends and you know meet meet who knows maybe their future husbands future wives future lovers whatever and and it's it's just a great little pocket of society that doesn't really have a chance to flourish anywhere else and it's really wonderful to be part of that. And something that's very hard to explain to other people. Exactly. Like, and where it, are you and going this weekend? And it's very nice to get to go somewhere where you don't have to explain it, isn't it? It's, Definitely. I love it. Is there a convention you would like to go to but haven't yet? Um, there are many that I would love to go back to. Um, that I've been uh, once or twice and I love them. Uh, there's a whole slew of those. Um, I don't know, there, there are hypothetical conventions. I would love to go to a convention in Scotland. I don't know that there is such a thing, but I would love to go to a convention in Scotland at some point. Um, I had the chance to visit Scotland years and years and years ago and would love to go back. Um, I'm just on a lark because of my role in Italia, I would love if there was a, <laughs> if there was a, uh, Convention in Paris. <laughs> huge one, right? yeah. it's a huge, yeah, I would love Paris. to go to that one, <laughs> just to see the kind of hell I would get <laughs> for playing France as I do in our dub of Italia. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, there's a few, there's a few. Have you ever cosplayed? I, I I've cosplayed, um, not not since uh, doing this professionally, though. I really, really want to. Um, I've cosplayed uh, the Doctor. Doctor Who have cosplayed uh, Tom Baker's Doctor the Fourth, um, who's among my favorites. Um, I've cosplayed the Joker, of course. I, I've done some cosplay here and there, yes, but not not nothing anime related, as it turns out. Um, but I really want to. There's several characters that I'd love to be able to cosplay that I've actually played. I'm like, I would love to actually, but I also look nothing like most of my characters. But I think I think I could pull off a decent scar with the right makeup and 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 the right hair. I could pull up a decent scar because we actually kind of built similarly enough, but I'm not the swelled, cute, <laughs> long haired, you know, doe eyed boy that I usually end up playing, so I can't really convincingly cosplay most of the characters I'm portraying, which is, ah, oh, the irony. <laughs> and so you used to watch anime before you became a voice actor? Oh, yes. What yes. were some of your favorite shows? Um, I grew up on some of the classics, really. I grew up, I grew up on, like, Star Blazers and Voltron and. Um, Silverhawks, which no one seems to remember but me, um, but but some people do. Some people remember, um, but I bring it up and I just get the thousand yard stare. Uh, Cat, the Captain Harlock series, I loved that when I was young, and it was really cool because anime. I credit for being you know the first thing I ever watched that helped me develop a sense for story and character because most of the animated stuff uh, that was made for kids my age was pretty you know, thin, broadly played, you know, fun stuff, but nothing, n not dramatic, you know. And I just, I was allowed to watch anime because my parents, well, it's animated, it's safe for kids, but, you know, you had all these wonderfully adult, often very dark themes, these very complex stories going on, and they, they, you couldn't just dip into them anywhere, you had to watch them sequentially because they, they, 
they played out over long periods of time, and so you had to sort of bring your A game as an audience member to watch it and get everything you could out of it. And that was really the first uh, television of its kind I'd ever seen. And so, I, I, if I hadn't discovered anime when I did, I, I wonder. I don't think I'd be as strong a viewer of anything now as I am. I don't think I'd be in, in, as into drama uh, or in sci-fi as I was, uh, as I am now, if I hadn't encountered anime. So anime played a pretty formative part in in how my brain looks at things, really. I think, and that's not an exaggeration. That's absolutely true. So, yes, I've been watching anime for before it was called anime, or before we knew it was called anime. It was called just a cartoon, or, or there was a period in the 80s when it was called Japanimation. I remember that. <laughs> but yeah, it's been, a, it's been part of my life for a very long time. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. So we're still running our contest for the Android phone. All you have to do is make a promo for Anime Cons TV and uh, we'll select the best one and the winner gets this great phone. It's a Samsung Galaxy S phone. It's a Samsung Captivate actually. It's running Android. It's got 16 gigabytes of storage. You can put your podcasts on here and music. You can make calls Our podcast on yes. there. <laughs> our podcast will work on here. And uh, so all you have to do is make a promo video, submit that by October 17th. Is it 17th? Monday the 17th. And uh, we extend the deadline because we're shooting our next episode on that date. So we're going to pick the winner right before we shoot and show your video in the episode. So make one up, it'll be great. Also, we've got emails. Haven't had one of these in a while. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Amber writes, Hi guys, this isn't so much a question for the show as a question for you as podcasters. I'm looking to start my own video podcast about cosplay and wanted to ask you if you have any tips or suggestions for someone just starting out. Your podcast inspired me to start my own and I greatly admire your work. Hopefully I will be able to interview you in the future about cosplay. That sounds great. I, I know. Yeah. Yeah, there's plenty of uh, plenty of room out there for a new podcast. And if you listen to our interview with Brian Brushwood that we had uh, a couple months ago, he talked about how to get started. And one of the things he said was, "Go out there and do it. Just don't wait. Do it." Yeah, and his exact quote is, uh, "Nothing but a thousand episode can't fix anything. So you just start out and just iron it out as you go. Just keep going, keep doing the next episode, the next episode, and you'll finally figure out what you're doing and." how you want to do it and present it. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to wait until everything's perfect. Just get it out there and learn as you go. Even look back at our first episode. Wait, don't look at our first episode. Yeah, don't. No. Uh, yeah, you, but yeah, you'll see that we've got we've come a long way. I mean, we've got a set now. We have yeah. got like microphones and a table. We give away stuff. Yeah, it's a little uh, we got an intro. We have we an intro. All yes. sorts of cool yeah. stuff now that we've just kind of evolved over time. So, so. Uh, oh, we have now is uh, voicemails. Voicemails! Let's hear what this new voicemail is. Go. I love you guys. This is uh, Misako Yoshida. I'm 18 years old from Ohio, and I go to every con I possibly can. Your show makes me laugh. Um, you guys show the most amazing things, and I get the best tips. So thank you very much. Bye. Oh, thank you. That's awesome. That's great. I love <laughs> it. I want more. Yeah. And speaking of more... Call us. We have the voicemail line. Yeah. That's it's right here. 762. Yeah. 
adequate. We have another voicemail. Hello, Anime Con TV. I thought I'd leave you a message in Spanish. So here it goes. Lo pollo verde, apple say mañana. Yes, you're welcome. He's gonna fart on Vic Manana? I think that's what he said. I mean, I'm no expert in uh, Spanish. I know French, but I don't know Spanish. Um, okay. You do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you want to leave us a voicemail, the number's down here again, 762-ADEQUATE. 762-233-something-something-something-something. 7828 or something. Two, ah, whatever. You can also email us at podcasts at animecons.tv or podcast at animecons.tv. Both of them work, so whatever. <laughs> uh, and join us on Facebook, facebook.com slash animeconspodcast. Twitter is twitter.com slash TV or just at TV. Please follow us there. We need more followers. We get like two. So, and uh, yeah, drop us a line. Tell us what you think and uh, hope to hear from you soon. TV. Simba. A bridge was installed and uh, I lost my place because I got so much text crammed in there. My thing went black. <laughs> I'm sorry. We have a piece of paper. We can show see Paradise there. You look like Weird Al. <laughs> <laughs> Sing a Weird Al song. White and nerdy. Eat it. Yeah, because that's totally how white and nerdy goes. Yeah. What nerdy? <laughs> what? <laughs> Alright. Is that everything? <laughs> <laughs> Better be. Ow. <laughs> Greetings, Congoers. I'm Sketch, and this is the first podcast for AnimeCons.com. <laughs>